Howdy partners, I'm Sunset Carson. Today I have a very special guest for you, a young lady that starred in many, many Western movies, and she's still beautiful and still starring in a lot of pictures now, Miss Penny Edwards. Hi, you Penny. Hi, Sunset, so good to be here. So it's well to have you here, honey. Thank you. And my gun kinda hooked up over here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, what you been doing lately, Penny? Oh, I, um, I've been working in the radio business. My husband and I are putting together a television station Wonderful. in the Victorville area, be in the high desert. Oh, well, that's great. Mm -hmm. We kind of different from the westerns you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do all westerns, but it seems as though that's the only thing I'm remembered for, really, are the westerns. At Tyrone Power, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, tell us a little bit how you started out, how you got into the Westerns from Tyrone Power into... Yes, well, actually, sort of like by default, I, I started on Broadway. I was a musical comedy, a singer and dancer. I was a ballet tap dancer, mm -hmm. sort of like Ann Miller style. And I, I was, I mean, I practiced eight hours a day, my dancing, and I was a singer, an opera singer, and I did pop singing and, and uh, nothing to do with Westerns whatsoever. And I was brought out to Hollywood, and my very first picture was Two Guys from Texas, where I played opposite Jack Carson, and it was a musical western. And I sang with Dennis Morgan and danced, and, and from there I did, well, I played with Ronald Reagan and that Hagen girl, one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I, I did, um, oh, let's see several other pictures at Warner's End. I did a picture called Feud and Fussin' and Fighting, and I played opposite Donald O'Connor, which was another musical western. And it just seemed like from there I, I got into westerns. And I love that in Feud, Fussin' and Fighting. <laughs> Donald, Donald is the most adorable person. I just loved working with him. He must be a wonderful guy to work oh, with. We played Pinochle all the time. Had a lot of fun, and he, he does, he can do anything, you know, he can, he can sing, he can do opera, he, of course he dances, he does every kind of dancing, and he's such a wonderful actor, and he's such fun to be with. How long did it take you to do Feud and Fussin' and Fight? Feud and Fussin' and Fight, Marjorie Maine, Percy Kilbride, oh, wow, I think we had like a six or eight week schedule. Marjorie Maine. I loved her. I tell you, she she was wonderful. I bet you it was that wonderful to work with. No. Oh, <laughs> She's mean, a tough lady. You mean she was temperamental? Uh, uh, yes, well, she would blow the lines. You could have 48 takes, and you'd finally do a very bad take, and she would be perfect. You know, she knew exactly what she was doing. She kept that camera. You know, she always stole a picture, and I think that's why, you know, she just... Oh, I'll be done. <laughs> yeah, really, she was a tough lady, but Percy Kilbride, oh, what a doll he was. And, uh, Wonderful person. Jerome Power was... <laughs> he was, I think he was about the hardest worker I've ever worked with. Uh, he was always ready. He was, knew every, all his lines, and he was a wonderful, wonderful intellectual, type of person. He loved to play word games and oh, spelling. Oh, my worst subject. And I'd be there trying to, to play games with him after after we were on location in Sedona, Arizona. And it snowed. And it snowed. And we were there for a month waiting to shoot while it was snowing. You know, so we did nothing but play word games. My goodness. I think I learned to spell a few words, but not very many. And that time they took you to shoot that picture, Mr. Yates would have built two studios and done 900 uh, westerns and three serials, wouldn't Yeah, he? Mr. Zanuck, he fired just about everybody on that movie. It, well, the name of the movie was Pony Soldier. Uh -huh. It was just on TV last week. And it was, it was interesting to make. We, as I said, we were in Sedona, Arizona, and we had some, some uh, interesting scenes that we did. One was... We had a director, his name was Joseph Newman, and he hadn't done very many features at that time. Uh, he had done a fire feature before. And in my first day, I always had a terrible problem. 
in so much as I always looked to theatrical, you know what I mean? Sort of like I, so they, they do everything. They do tests on me to, to, to make me look older and to make me look plain. And they take all my makeup off and I'd feel sort of naked, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. And they gave me these ghastly hairdos and all these things to try to make me look very plain. But I get on the set the first day and Mr. Newman looks at me and he says, she looks like she got out of a bandbox. Bring the dirt. Okay. <laughs> so, but we didn't bring the dirt. No, that wasn't the first thing. He had me take the red dirt of Arizona and put it all over my face, right? He said, that's not enough. He brought the charcoal in, put the charcoal all over my face. And I'm there in the wagon with my father, who has a very clean face, and Robert Horton, who has a very clean face. <laughs> <laughs> I have oh, this no. black face with all this stuff on. And we're trying to escape from the Indians. Well, the cinematographer wouldn't photograph it. And we were at a standstill for like three days. Nobody would shoot anything because he wouldn't. What was his name? Joe. He's marvelous and a wonderful old cinematographer. And. So we, we waited there for several days before, while they were fighting about the charcoal on my face. And finally they did take it off and just washed my face and that was the whole thing. So I just... My goodness, you but, know. You know <laughs> <laughs> we had a scene in that picture in, in Pony Soldier where, where we, right after this, where I was going across the river with my brother and father and the Indians attacked the wagon. And it, they wanted realism, and it was a real wagon, of course, and it had real straw and none of this gas jets for the fire. And they shot real fire arrows at us, I mean, whizzing by with fire. And the Robert Horton shot a shotgun off in my ear, and I was deaf from, for about two weeks after. <laughs> And the, between the wagon that was on fire and the horses were rearing up because they hate fire, we were in the middle of this ice, icy river. It was in February. It was uh, melted snow. Mm. And the Indians come in. I try to jump out of the wagon because I have to. The Indians come in. Frank McGrath takes me over the pummel. I, oh, I fall into the, into the icy water. The horses are rearing. I almost had my hand cut off. <laughs> I'm lying in this, this river and it's going by. And Frank McGrath gets me up and throws me over the pummel of the horse. And, you know, it doesn't feel very good on no, your stomach. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we ride out of the scene and we're almost all killed. And the director said, no, it wasn't real enough. Do it again. So we, yeah. did, we didn't do it again. <laughs> the stuntmen refused to do it, thank goodness. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see I could have been any realer. <laughs> <laughs> it was real, yeah. It looked, looked good, but sometimes in the television versions, they, they cut that scene out, the first part. It sort mm -hmm. of sets up the story where we're captured. But. And you did some too with Roy, didn't you? Yes, sir. I did uh, six pictures with Roy Rogers when Dale was having her baby. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, Roy is something else. He's uh, just about the nicest person that ever walked down the pike. Well, that's wonderful. And, uh, you, of course, you know, you just have to love Roy and Dale. They're just so... I just love them so, you know. I just always hug her and, mm. and get a picture. What horse did you draw on his picture? Oh, I had buttermilk. You had buttermilk. Buttermilk. <laughs> I, rode, I rode buttermilk before Dale did. Oh, great. That's yeah. wonderful. And I used to practice all the time and I, I really I, I became Roy really taught me how to ride and mm -hmm. and I became a very good rider. Matter of fact I I have a sort of strange thing. I I have a I I feel kind of funny because as many horses as I've been on in movies and I've done hundreds of movies I mean hundreds of television shows and thirty five or six features, I've never fallen off a horse. And I've been on some really wild horses, and I used to think, gee, you know, I'm really 
Not very much of that. I've never fallen off a horse. <laughs> well, you, that's wonderful. You're a good rider. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was my dancing. Well, it's, it's probably your legs being strong from dancing, that, which makes you a good rider. You hold on. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, what are some of the other cowboys you worked with? Yes, I worked with Rocky Lane uh, and Rex Allen mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, Monty Hale. We did. Uh, I was in one movie called uh, The Trail of Robin Hood and Jack Holt, and it was a story about uh, a Christmas tree uh, thing, and, and we called in all the old cowboys and uh, all his friends, Jack Holt's friends, to save the Christmas trees. And so I got to work with, you know, with all a whole group. It was just, uh, it was a thrilling was Tim, experience. Was Tim Holt in the... No. No, Jack was in it. Just, it was soon just, before he died, you know. hmm. yeah. That picture played Radio City Music Hall. I just found that out. Oh, I see. <laughs> and Christmas, yeah. I always liked Jack Holt. He was the Leonard Joel. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he would have done a good Dick, Dick Tracy, wouldn't he? he been a real really? One. Really? It seems like everybody in the business liked Jack. You know. Yes. Roy Barcroft. An old Roy, <laughs> yes, there's one. Boy, what a guy, huh? Yeah, he's a wonderful guy to work with. He loves to play tricks and, yeah. you know, and loves mm. to do his fights and stuff. Yeah, yeah. boy, they t played a trick on me one day. <sighs> they said, I'll bet you, you can't touch that tree. Have you ever done this to a leading lady? You can't touch that tree uh, blindfolded if we turn you around. And I said, Oh, well, of course I can do that, you know. So they blindfold me and spin me around, and I go heading for the tree with this finger, and they have a jar of mustard there and a horse standing by. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, when I took the blindfold off, I, I was quite perturbed. <laughs> I guess Roy Barcroft was in on that. Yes, sir. <laughs> that was <Yeah>. fantastic. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, Penny, I guess we could probably go on for hours talking, and I know that you have to be on your way soon. And I would just love to thank you for stopping by and visit us on the Hollywood Nostalgia Theater. It's just been certainly wonderful to... <laughs> be with you and have you down here and and I hope before we close or someday you can come by when you have a in a gunfight or something and shoot a few of the old outlaws again. Wonderful, I'd love to. <laughs> if I could still do it. <laughs> well we can still do it. Okay. Well partners, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of our Hollywood Nostalgia Theater with Penny Edwards. Until we see you again, so long, goodbye, and may God bless you. Bye now. Bye.